Ladies and gentlemen, it's great to be here again in my second session here at the Arctic uh, Circle. Uh, what I am about to introduce is basically the uh, cooperation on the next uh, Arctic Science Ministerial Meeting co-hosted by Iceland and Japan. What I want to do here today, I want to, I want to go over the cooperation as regards to the Arctic Council and the Arctic Science Ministerial Meetings. Uh, next, I want to go over Iceland's Japan's relationship as regards to uh, Arctic cooperation and science relationship. Next, I want to go over kind of uh, uh, inclusiveness and how much uh, importance we place on inclusiveness and transparency and innovation. We think it's very important when we are heading towards the next uh, uh, Arctic ministerial meeting is that we, that we have our objectives clear. And we have four variables that we're going to focus on. Number one is cooperation, uh, two is inclusiveness, three is transparency, and then fourth, innovation. And I'll go over why we place such a great importance on all these four variables. Um, as a small nation, uh, everything that we do uh, is built on a cooperation with other nations. And that's why when we were uh, approached by hosting the next uh, Arctic Science Ministerial Meeting and co-hosting it with Japan, we gave it a very good thought. We thought about our partner and what Iceland and the scientific community would gain, and not only the communities of those two countries, but also at large for the international community. And we looked at possible common interests of both nations when we were deciding uh, to take that piece on. What we have focused on throughout the years is uh, promoting our own scientists. And I want to give you an example of a great scientist, the so-called uh, the, the drill master. His name is uh, Sifus Jonsen. And what you, what you see here is his usual quote by every day, what did we learn today? Or in Icelandic, hvað skildu við læra nýtt í dag? And he was a great friend of Japan. He, um, he's the one that enabled the European GRIP project to collect 3,028 meter ice core, a complete sample from the thickest part of Greenland ice sheet. This was such a su success, this GRIP project, and it enabled and strengthened the relationship between Iceland and Japan. And he, I'm told, as regards to the, my Japanese colleagues tell me, that he is viewed to be the, the hero uh, of the relationship between Iceland and Japan. And why am I mentioning uh, the life of, of Sifu, who unfortunately passed away a few years ago? I'm doing that just to emphasize that friendship and cooperation between nations, they can do unbelievable things if we focus on it and cherish it and cultivate it like we're doing here at the Arctic Circle. And uh, one of the emphases that Sifus always played was getting everyone at the table and focusing on domestic knowledge in public policy. And that's what we're going to emphasize during uh, the next Arctic Science Ministerial Meeting. And this is just a, a sample of, of the great project that he was responsible with uh, fellow Japanese scientists and US scientists. And I've, been, I've also been told that uh, Antarctic uh, base, the Dome Fuji, would not have been as successful unless that they would have worked on this project. Another thing that we are focusing on is that we have a, a year-long science process. We are bringing the, um, the Arctic Science Ministerial Meeting 
to the scientists by holding international symposium on Arctic research in Tokyo in, in March, by hosting Arctic Science Summit Week and an Arctic Observing Summit in 2020 in both March and April in Akureyri. And then also another international congress of Arctic social science in Russia. Why are we doing this? We think it's important that we have like a, a, a kind of a run-up or a, a year-long process so we can get the scientists together and the input is being provided in the run-up of the ministerial meeting. We think the uh, output of such cooperation is going to be much greater. Next, I want to focus on inclusiveness. Uh, one of the key things, as I mentioned, for successful uh, policy making is that we have all the key stakeholders at the table. And this means domestic knowledge and the importance of having uh, the endogenous uh, uh, people at the Arctic with us. Nothing will happen without them. We need to make certain that everyone around the Arctic and the, and the homes of the people that live there are involved in the policy making. We know this here in Iceland, uh, all our glacier research in recent times often started first by international uh, scientists, but they worked with domestic scientists and created something really good by operating that way. And another thing that we are focusing on is that we want to hear from the community we have established an uh, interactive website and where you can basically uh, put all your feedback, both from this, uh, from the Arctic Circle and the year-long process. So once we get to Tokyo in a year's time, we have uh, a lot of material to work with and this is a, a key thing in our inclusiveness. This being said, uh, we think youth and children is key, obviously, to the success of an Arctic sustainable policy. We need to make certain that uh, our children realizes that with innovation and knowledge and scientific research, we will have sustainable solutions in order to address uh, climate change. So we will place an extra emphasis on uh, children and the youth in the run-up and during our meeting in Tokyo. Uh, the third part is transparency. We look at the cooperation as that we're building a bridge. But if you want to cross the bridge, you need to trust the bridge. It needs to be strong. And we believe that having everything open and in a transparent manner, open science, will build this trust. So we place a great emphasis and with the website, the interactive website that we have designed, that will be like one of the pillars in, in creating trust. The fourth uh, variable that we're focusing on is innovation. We believe that, that we have a lot to work further on as regards to innovation. And Iceland has a lot to offer, as like 99% of electricity in Iceland is produced by renewable energy resources. And this is really important. And this needs to be highlighted and stressed as one of the solutions in order to address uh, climate change. So it's cooperation, inclusiveness, transparency, and innovation are the things that we're going to focus on. And this is the website that I just mentioned. I encourage all of you to uh, go to it. Uh, we just launched it and it's interactive and I think that we will get very good uh, feedback and input from everyone that is highly uh, involved in, in, Arctic sustainable, in a sustainable Arctic going forward. Thank you very much.